Uh, salutations YouTube. Going to do a quick video. Um, these are apparently failures. These are my new molds. Um, going to try something new. These are the um, the two CP7 bullet molds. Um, it actually held up quite well uh, given everything it went through. Um, I was able to get the sides off. This one was chalk, um, chalk or whatever, but peeling the sides off of these, these bullet molds, I don't use this one. This is a PLA, it's not very good, but, um, didn't print it with a raft. But this is, a uh, this bullet mold, and this one was dusted and this one wasn't, so you can see there's not much of a difference in cleaning the cavities out of CP7. It bonds well. Uh, I did cook these in a toaster oven for approximately three to three and a half hours. Started at half hour intervals. Oh, it's a stinky mess getting that PLA out. But I'm not giving up on this. We're going to keep going. Um, given the way the CP7 actually held up, might make a good bullet mold instead of Mold Max uh, 60 as what was recommended in the file. This could be a good alternative, and I will have a working cp7 soon um but this is what it looked like release no release cp7 um couldn't melt the pla out uh, and it bonded quite well so it's not like it was an easy pull out either like mold max 60 which is a silicone which easy to pull out so we'll get them to the side um this was the uh quick steel um let me see crap falling out uh, it held up well to the heat. This is the JB Weld Quick Steel. Uh, but that stuff started hardening real fast. We could have had maybe four cavities that could have made bullet molds out of this. But it hardened real quick. But you can see it just didn't let go of the PLA, which is the problem with molding. Um, this was the uh, high heat JB Weld that I backed up with CP7. Interestingly, the high heat seemed to hold up well and it really hardened in that toaster oven pretty good so it's not quite a you know unfeasible idea but the cp7 let go as you can see uh you can see in here the hollow point cavities that were created by the cp7 this one didn't have a hollow point which you know as long as the diameter is correct i don't see much of a problem with it but Again, PLA just doesn't want to let go of this, and I believe that this high heat actually needs heat to cure. It was really difficult working with it, but we'll get that out of the way. So, as I said before, this is a PLA bullet mold. Um, I will just print this just for an example. Um, not using a raft for some reason, it just didn't stick very well to the bed of the printer. And some of you good 3D printers might see some problems with a lot of this i was trying to use a brim this is just a regular mold but this is hips okay now as you can see the walls and the thickness of the walls seem to be a bit of a problem um as i said cp7 might leak out of these cracks but i'm going to try it anyway but hips is limonene you put uh, this citrus blast limonene I, I'm not even I just found it on Amazon you know whatever but this limonene cleaner and this high impact polystyrene this will just dissolve into nothing so if you were casting with CP7 and then you put it in a container that you know had hips in it uh, or limonene take this container cast a mold when the cp7 hardens just drop it in as long as it's covered with limonene that polystyrene will degrade and just come completely out of the mold then you'll be able to pull out a mold like this for you know just out of this and i'm going to try this i'm going to still feel this even though these side walls are cracked this one didn't crack as much this is also high impact polystyrene. These are the hollow point and these are just the round nose 9mm bullets for casting. 
um, one person on a chat I'm in was talking about this molding idea in the um, let's see, the FGC9 for casting parts. He gave me an STL. This is PLA again, no brim, no. I think I did a skirt on this one, but you know you can see the rise from the printer how it kind of peels away. This is just cheap uh, PLA, nothing. You don't got to go out and buy expensive stuff for this, this idea. But in here, we have the cavity for the ejector. Uh, this part, let me get it out. Uh, this part right here. So, we have our cavity that will cast this in whatever kind of epoxies or... Uh, whatever we decide to do, this is just a PLA mold, which means trying to get this off of this part is going to be quite difficult. I'm still going to run CP7 in this, regardless. I, I don't care. I'm going to run CP7 in this part of PLA and see. I will dust this with chalk since chalk, chalk was the best mold release, but I'm going to do that. But this is in hips, so there's your part. Fill this with CB7, put it in the limonene, and when you're done, you should have this part made out of this product. This stuff is quite hard, and like I said, I baked it for three to three and a half hours at about 450 degrees in a toaster oven, and it held up just fine. So we should be able to get this part out of this mold quite cleanly and take a look at it. Um, there are other ideas with the molding. Um, a lot of people, you know, we'd love to imagine being able to cast a barrel. Uh, would be great. I really think that's the idea here. But I will, when I can finally get like a barrel uh, STL, I'm going to try it. I'm going to build it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put like a barrel liner. I like to start with 22. Let's start small, not go fast. Let me get this out of here. I have carbon fiber. I have fiberglass cloth. I have two part resins. And I also have some graphite powder. Um, that right there shows some promise. Especially with the, uh, this, if you add it in at a 10% ratio of graphite powder, it gives it something to bond to. So, my thought is if you was to buy a barrel liner, in a whatever caliber you want it's already rifled uh, you can get those on brown nails um, if you could have a mold that could hold the cast of a barrel in hips let's say hips because we know we can get rid of this mold this mold can just degrade away so get the mold put the barrel liner in you could use some glue wrap it in carbon fiber wrap it in fiberglass make a mix of this stuff, this two-part epoxy resin, it's a very good possibility that we could possibly use this with 10% of graphite added. And my thought is, could that make a working barrel? Remember, the barrel liner is properly machined from Brownells, 22 long rifle caliber, uh, that's going to contain most of these pressures. You wrap it in this with a 50-50 mix of this and add 10% of graphite powder, this could be a barrel. I, I really do believe this could be an actual working 22 barrel. Um, but I have to share this video and talk to some people. But I can just imagine this being tall. For whatever length barrel you're trying to create for say a 1022 with the barrel shape for a 1022 barrel maybe and then you could wrap this around the barrel liner as like I said this is carbon fiber and cover it with a you know, resin and graphite mix what would happen if that produced an actual working barrel without a lathe um, so 
these are my thoughts on where we're going but pretty soon I'm about to mix up some CP7 and try to cast these molds and these molds because honestly the CP7 just flowed well even though it wasn't perfect we have some you know it's still runny enough to fill molds up but also I mean it's pretty pretty damn hard but these are my ideas I'm gonna post this and share the link and chat and see what people think about it but honestly I'm looking forward to doing the CP7 tonight and try to get that video up by the end of this weekend I know I've been behind but uh, had a lot going on so till then everyone keep shooting and keep thinking